Chris Shandek, Sea Winery covering Las Vegas and the world. If you have not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with everything we have going on here in Las Vegas and beyond. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. And if you're returning to watch another video, welcome back to the channel. To begin today, we're going to focus on the Mirage Hotel and Casino closed this week on the Las Vegas Strip. The famed Las Vegas Resort opened in 1989. And to me, this is just my opinion. The Mirage was the beginning of a new era in Las Vegas where there were many other glamorous, larger than life and wow fact resorts that were built after the Mirage opened its doors in 1989. The resort will end up going through a bunch of renovations and changes and open back up as, as the Hard Rock in a few years. It'll be very interesting to see where that goes. But putting that aside and what the future holds for that area on the Las Vegas Strip, Let's talk about something else this evening, the history of the Mirage and some of the highlights. Of course, first off, you have to think of Siegfried and Roy, the famous headliners of Las Vegas were there from 1990 to 2003 with their Tigers. In Las Vegas entertainment history, Siegfried and Roy are one of those acts that people think of as far as somebody that you would go to see in Las Vegas at a resort, aside from maybe Elvis Presley, Celine Dion in recent decades and this decade, Adele, Lady Gaga, the such. Um, there are a few people who people tie to Las Vegas as the such. Maybe you could also think of Tom Jones, of course, also. But there are, you know, few people that people think about, I'm going to go to Las Vegas to see them. And of course, how could we ever forget Mr. Las Vegas, Wayne Noon? But there aren't many. Um, and Siegfried and Roy were at the Mirage from 1990 to 2003. So just to begin on that front, number one, um, one of the reasons that people will remember the Mirage. Number two, if you remember the movie Rounders, of course, starring Matt Damon, Edward Norton, and John Malkovich, you'll remember that Matt Damon talks about playing at the poker room at the Mirage. At that time when the movie was made, the Mirage was probably arguably the biggest poker room in Las Vegas. After that, when the Bellagio opened, probably the Bellagio overtook it at that point. But for many years, the Mirage Poker Room was one of the you know hot places to be as far as card rooms in, in the country. So people thought about that back in that time. And then focusing, of course, going forward from that, how can you forever forget the famous volcano show outside, which you know just had its last show this week? And of course, more than anything else, Thinking about this resort in general, you know, when you walk through it and all these other things, of course, you think of the dolphin tank and the live animals that used to live there, which no longer do, of course. So those are some of the overviews of the Mirage itself. In recent years, of course, um, America's Got Talent winner Terry Fader performed there. Sea Waterby was on hand to cover his residency during his time there. Of course, at the end of this uh, video, we're going to play some videos of the Mirage Volcano. And one of the things that I enjoy most about the Mirage is the water out front inside of the volcano, a front of the volcano, is that there used to be a bunch of geese that would always hang out and swim in there. And to me, that area of the Las Vegas Strip is one of the most beautiful and soothing and family fun um, areas of the entire Boulevard. And, you know, there will be many great memories that I have over the years walking by the geese and seeing them for myself. So that is something to also think about. So without further ado, we're going to play three videos. I'm going to play you a little bit of a volcano show that I took place, that I took earlier this year. Going to take a picture, going to show you a video of some of the geese I saw earlier this year. And then after that, we're going to run our 15-minute sea wine interview, which I conducted with Terry Fader during his residency at the Mirage in 2019. So I hope you enjoy this, um, you know, the reality of what it comes down to. The one thing you should always know about Las Vegas and the Las Vegas Strip is all good things must come to an end and nothing is forever. And it'll be interesting to see what is in store for that area of the Las Vegas Strip when the Hard Rock opens it back up in a couple of years. I'm Chris Yannick for CY Interview. Please subscribe to the channel and please stick around now to watch some of a Mirage Volcano show from earlier this year, the geese that used to be up front, and then hear my 15-minute approximate sea wine interview of Terry Fader, who used to have a residency at the Mirage a few years ago. Thank you so much.
You're on CY Interview. I'm Chris Yandek. Today on CY Interview, we welcome ventriloquist, impressionist, singer, and comedian Terry Fader. You may recall him from the TV show America's Got Talent. For the last 10 years, he has been performing in Las Vegas. He currently has a residency at the Mirage Hotel and Casino. Terry, thanks so much for being on CY Interview this morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we no problem. We appreciate it. So let me just start, and this is the question I think that I leave your show that we saw this past weekend thinking, when did you know you could put the singing together with the impressions, put the puppets all together, and add some comedy in between? Well, you know, I always, I always was doing it. I, I started doing ventriloquism when I was 10. I started doing, um, I started singing before I could walk practically. I mean, I loved singing, and I always had a, had a propensity for singing, for being able to sing. And, um, and so even from the very beginning, I was having my puppets do impressions and, and sing and stuff. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, though, it just didn't feel like that um, amazing of a thing. So I didn't really realize how people would fall with it until I saw a, an impressionist in Las Vegas named Danny Gans. Yep. I don't know if you ever saw Danny, but uh, I know he was Danny. absolutely. I know of Danny. Yeah, he was he was amazing. He was so incredible, and and I, as I'm sitting there watching him, I'm I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I, I didn't really really realize that I was an impressionist. So I thought, well, geez, I can do all these things that he's doing, and and I thought so I could put together a show similar to what he does, but then at the same time I was thinking, boy. It, if I if I just get up and do a show like Danny, everybody's going to think I'm Danny Gans Light, which I really didn't want. I kind of wanted to make my own mark of something unique, and so I thought, well, I'm a ventriloquist, so why don't I just have my puppets do the impressions? And little did I know, my goodness, I honestly had no idea that it would uh, take off the way it did and be as as uh, you know people people just really are fascinated by it. But for me, um, you know, there's a, don't get me wrong, there's an awful lot of hard work and, and you know, p- work to perfect the gifts that I was given. But, you know, the, the talent itself, it came so easily for me that, you know, I just could do it. Um, and then once, if you, you know, it's like people just can't say, I'm going to become an impressionist. You have to have the gift, the ability. So when you're looking at somebody like a Frank Caliendo or a, uh, a Rich Little, you know, you, you actually have to be born with the gift to do it. Um, and I guess I was. <laughs> so, if if we call you the uh, the current star of today in, in your area of profession, obviously, as you said, Rich Little, that would be considered the legend of that area. So, what does it mean knowing that down the road at the Tropicana um, is the is the legend of the business? You're the current star of the business. What does that mean to you? What are your thoughts on Rich? Um, you know, Rich is is a legend and. Uh, he, I think that that he's doing it more. It's it's harder for him to find a uh, uh, like one of the one of the big venues because uh, you know they're really looking for what's what's popular today. But for him, it's not even really about trying to be you know at at one of the bigger places. It's more for him being able to just continue doing what he's doing. And I'm, I'm ex- exactly the same way. When I'm up in my 80s and 90s, I, I still want to be doing it. I don't really care where I'm doing it. You know, once you've established yourself and you've already uh, kind of made enough money in your career to where y- you can do it because you want to, then you just look for the venues. You don't care. It's the same with, uh, like, Marty Allen. was a, uh, was a a uh, He used to perform at some of the smaller casinos here, and he didn't really care uh, where it was. It was more just doing it. So I'm so pleased that he's still performing, um, and I'm still happy that, that he's there because I, my wife and I went to see him, and, uh, you know, a lot of younger people wouldn't really uh, like it because it's, it's older stuff, but it's stuff I grew up with. You know, it's Jimmy Stewart and Johnny Carson and people that we grew up with. And wow, what an amazing show! So, if, even if if you're a younger person and you like uh, those that era, that you know the uh, the maybe the '60s, '70s, and '80s, you you should absolutely go see Rich's show. What he does is he does uh, these personal interactions that he's had with these people, and he does it through their voices. So he has actually been there. Um, and he tells some of the funniest and most incredible stories of these people. It's just incredible. Yeah. It's a really great show. Oh, I, I highly I've recommend it to anyone. I, I've seen it myself. We've had a chance to interview him over there at the Laugh Factory. Um, we were with him, actually, on his 80th birthday this past December. Just, oh, that's just fantastic. A, it's great, isn't it? Such, 
he's just such a great human being, and his family is just wonderful. All great people really enjoy Rich, and obviously, you know, enjoy his Ronald Reagan and all those other impressions for sure, absolutely. I want to ask you now, so focusing on you, when you got to Vegas 10 years ago, did you think it was going to last 10 years? And then the second part of the question is, how did you make it last 10 years? Um, did I think did I think it was going to last ten years? Yeah, I did. I I actually was very very confident, and the reason I say that is because I had seen the kind of reaction that uh, what I do uh, has on people, um, and I just knew that people loved seeing the impressions and with through puppets, you know. And it's really a unique something. I'm the only person that can do it. So, you know, if you want to come and see something like that, I'm the only one that, that does it. Now, there's other singing ventriloquists, but there's no one other, uh, to my knowledge, that, that actually uh, <laughs> does what I do and does, you know, I do over 200 impressions of singers, and I do it through puppets. And it's really uh, something that I, I think the reason people love it so much is that it's um, – it, it's a whimsical, it's, it gives us a chance to be children again, you know, um, and suddenly, no matter what age we are, we're seeing our favorite singers from our, uh, from our lifetimes singing as a puppet, and, but it feels like they're really alive, and so, so yes, I did, I did believe that it would work, and I did believe that it was going to continue to work. Um, the, the way I feel, the, the reason I've been able to continue on as long as I have, and even further, because my contract goes through 2020, at the end of 2021, is that I keep the show fresh. I keep the, I'm constantly rewriting the show. I'm one of the only people in town that uh, in the uh, holiday season, I do a full out Christmas show where everybody, I change everybody's, uh, you know, I change everybody's routines. I do all uh, Christmas and, and the holiday things. You know, I do some uh, Hanukkah and some other things to, uh, uh, for, the, for the season. And, uh, and so that keeps people coming through the holidays. And I'm always writing the show. I think I've rewritten the show 20 uh, or 30 times in the 10 years that I've been at the Mirage. So that definitely, you know, when somebody comes and sees it the second time a year later and says, oh, my gosh, that was really different. And then they, then they come year after year after year. I've had people see me 14 times, and they say they've never seen the same show. That's how I've been able to keep, them, keep, it, uh, keep the show going as long as I have answered a lot of my questions. Uh, thank you very much for the overview. That was fabulous. So you have recently added a Frank Sinatra puppet there, of course, is a Dean Martin, a Sammy Davis Jr., and Elton John, among other notable celebrities. What is your favorite celebrity puppet? Um, boy, you know, they're kind of all my favorites. I just love the – this is the era that – uh, while the, the Rat Pack was really before my era, it didn't matter. That was the ones my parents listened to. And I hear this a lot where people are like, oh, I know those songs because my parents, even children, young people, they're like, oh, I know that song. My parents listen to it, you know. Um, and so that's, that's just as good as you listening to it yourself because you're going to know it and you're going to and, and possibly even like it if, you don't, if you're not in that rebellious stage where you just hate everything your parents like, uh, which I went through that stage too. But, uh, but e even so, I, uh, you know, my dad used to, used to listen to the Rat Pack a lot, used to listen to Sinatra a lot. Um, of course, my grandmother used to love him, too. Um, so uh, I love doing those in that era. Um, my favorite celebrity puppet, you know, I would have to say it's David Bowie. Uh, I love my favorite routine that I do is that David Bowie Rocket Man uh, mashup with David Bowie and, and Elton John. And really, my David Bowie puppet came out, uh, actually came into existence because I, um, I had a Bing Crosby puppet, and I wanted to do the, um, the Little Drummer Boy with David Bowie, so I had a David Bowie puppet created so that it, during the Christmas season. And then when I was writing the show, you know, rewriting the new show, uh, An Evening with the Stars, which is what we call the new show, uh, I thought, oh, I should have him do uh, his space song with Elton John. And, uh, and oh, that's one of my favorite moments in the show. It's just, I don't know what it is about it that just captures me, and, and I, I look forward to it uh, every single night. What do you hope people take away from Terry Spader and Evening with the Stars at the Mirage? I hope that, that they feel just for a few moments that they've been able to forget their, their troubles and forget their issues and forget their, um, uh, the fact that maybe the, you know, they're having trouble at home or, they're, or uh, whatever the stress is that is getting you down. I, I hope that for that hour and a half, I give you some relief from that because I really feel that's what my calling is, is to bring, you know, I, I, my dad wanted to be a, be, to be a, a pastor 
and an evangelist, uh, and I just never felt that calling. But I feel that I did live up to it in one sense. I feel that I am an evangelist of joy, and and that's really what I hope you get from it. I hope you get a positive feeling. I hope you get you you get the feeling very very good. I hope I can help restore some of that child childlikeness that we all really desperately need in a, in a difficult world. And so, which is why I think people love the puppets because you know we don't. I hear this so often. A, a guy will say. Oh, I didn't want to see you. I thought, are you kidding me? You're bringing me to a puppet show. What's wrong with you? What are you doing? You know, and and then they come to see the show and say, Oh my gosh, I I absolutely loved it. That's that's my favorite. That's my absolute favorite thing is when people don't realize what they're going to see and what they're going to experience, and they think it's going to be something hokey or silly or goofy, and it turns out to be something that really touches them or that they really enjoy. And and I, I love that also. I love to surprise people uh, to ex- to get something different than what they expected. You know, because it's just the same. When I went on America's Got Talent, you know, David Hasselhoff leaned over to Sharon Osbourne, and these were the judges of, of my season, and he was like, oh, no, a ventriloquist. You know, because people think, oh, this is, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be for children. I don't want and, – and I love the fact that I, I transcend that. So I really do want people to just go away feeling uh, blessed and, and their, their spirits feeling like they, they just got a respite from, uh, from life's troubles to, for a little while. So here's the question I have for you then, um, looking at this scenario and situation. So your show is called Terry Fader and Evening with the Stars. Will Terry Fader ever do Dancing with the Stars? Um, I'm definitely open to it. I just don't know uh, if if my schedule would allow because I do a lot, but I'm gotcha, definitely open to it. Yeah. it. It could definitely happen in the future. You never know. Uh, So I'm sure you get asked every single day about America's Got Talent, but is there one memory that ever comes to mind more than others? You know, it it was such an amazing experience, and to my knowledge, they still tell this story about me. I was on season two, and here we are in, what, the the 14th season, I believe, or the the 13th or 14th season. And the reason I believe uh, that they tell this story is because – uh, it it really kind of explains to the uh, to the contestants, and the story is that and and it's true it absolutely is and and the reason they use me as an example is because you know I got on the show I had been I was 42 years old I had been trying to get recognized uh, for my entire life since I was uh, since I was young I started when I was in my 20s trying to uh, get recognized as a um, as an entertainer. And so here I was, 42, I had failed uh, to, to really garner any kind of recognition anywhere, and, um, and I, I, here was my opportunity, my opportunity to finally do it, my opportunity to finally make it and get, and get the kind of recognition that I had been dreaming of since I was young. So I, no matter what they asked me to do, I went in with a, with a smiling face, I sat, <laughs> I worked, I absolutely loved every, I did not... I did not um, get upset. I did not, you know, no matter what they asked, no matter what the hours were, and uh, all the other people might have been bitching and griping and saying, I don't want to get up at four in the morning, and, you know, well, this, and I was there with a smile, and, and that to me is the most, and the reason I, and people would ask me, why are you, why, <laughs> why do you do that? And I said, because this is my only opportunity. It's going to be over way too soon, and I'm so thrilled that I get to do this. I'm so happy that I actually get to sit here and, and have my dreams come true right now because that's really what was happening. My dreams were coming true. You can catch Terry Fader's residency at the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Terry Fader, Evening with the Stars. Terry, thanks so much for joining us this morning on CY Interview. Very quickly, anything you'd like to add in closing? Nope, I, I think we did it. Other than, uh, I think, yeah, one of the things that I would like to talk about is the fact that um, sales of my merchandise, uh, a, a large percentage of the sales of my merchandise go to uh, go to my charity, Terry Fader Foundation. And we work a lot with military. Uh, we work a lot with uh, first responders. And uh, and I'm very proud of that, of the fact that that, that we do that, that we uh, that we donate, you know, when you when you purchase my merchandise, you're supporting the Terry Fader Foundation. That's a, and you know, charity is very important to me. I think we all need to give back in in whatever wherever we are in our lives. We need to try to figure out ways to give back to uh, to the world and our communities. So, 
Very well said. Terry Fader, thanks so much for being on CY Interview. Hang on with me, okay, just for one second. You got it. For CY Interview, I'm Chris Yandek.